Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu You see the passage began Ya ayyuhal nas Remember that? All humanity But Allah is saying All of humanity has disappointed me So the responsibility falls on you Let me teach you what you will do To appreciate Allah Here's how you appreciate Allah Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu Irka'u wasjudu Make ruku'a Make sajda What is both of these things referring to? Salat the first act Allah teaches human... First He complained about humanity. That you're, not, you're not doing your job in appreciating me. You believers, it's your turn. You need to appreciate me. The first step in appreciating me will be... Salat. Where's your Salat? How much we appreciate our Salat is a good indication of how much we appreciate Allah. How active, how vigilant we are in getting up out of bed. How lazy we feel in making it to the masjid. How lazy we feel, how bored we are when, this, when the recitation is not entertaining enough. All of those are good indicators of where we stand before Allah Azza wa Jal. Irka'u wasjudu. Make ruku and make sajda. And irka'u wasjudu are parts of salat, but they're also attitudes. You know, somebody who doesn't know about prayer, doesn't know about the Muslim prayer. A non Muslim guy walks by and he sees people making salat. He's going to notice these people are standing with their head down. Holding their head, they're humble before somebody. Then they put their heads down like this halfway. Wow, they got even more humble. And when they got up, what happened next? Face on the ground, they got really humble. In other words, he's noticing that there's a progression in their humility to Allah, to whoever they're worshiping. They're getting even more and more and more subservient. This seems like they were they were they're appreciating their master, and they appreciated him more, and they appreciated him even more. The, the progression of Salat itself teaches us that we're supposed to evolve, grow in our humility to Allah. That's a really important point, especially if it has to do with Islamic work. You know what happens with people when they get involved with Islamic work? I'm no exception. All of us can be victim to this. The more tenured, the more experienced you get in Islamic work, the more full of yourself you get. I know what this stuff is. You're a rookie. You're a newbie. I've been working at, I've been a board member at the masjid for 20 years. <laughs> what do these guys know? You know? I ran the MSA two semesters in a row. <laughs> when you get experience, and you don't get more humble, you get more arrogant. Because you know in any other job, when you have more experience, you have more credentials, you have more respect, you have more appreciation, you're worth more. Right? Allah is teaching us the exact opposite attitude. The more you grow in deen, the more humble you should get. <laughs> the more humble you should get. SubhanAllah. And you'll notice, it, it's a good check. It's a good gauge. What was Iblis' problem? Adam alayhi salam, what's on his resume? How long he's been doing, sir? What's, what kind of experience he has? He gets a promotion over me. Now imagine you're a volunteer, you're helping out at the MSA at the college or at the Sunday school, you've been volunteering for 2-3 years and they pick a new principal for the Sunday school. You, ha you even had your you know, inauguration speech ready. And they pick this 18 year old kid to be the principal of the Sunday school. The story of Iblis is going to repeat itself. Ana khayrun minhu? What do you mean him? I got the experience man. I should have been the principal. That should have come to me. <laughs> the story repeats itself. It's not just a story that happened a long time ago. You know? So this, this idea, that we, as the more we serve, the more we're going to become humble. The most, the extreme of humility, was shudu. Then from there, because these two things still in the end, in essence, refer to salat. They refer to salat. What about in between the salawat? وَعْبُدُوا رَبَّكُمْ And enslave yourselves and worship your master. In other words, now that you know, ruku' and sajda is done, that's not the only ibadah. You understand ibadah is more than that. Ibadah is an attitude. I'm a slave. I'm here to serve. Ibadah is how I walk, how I talk, how I think about myself, how I think about others. Your entire attitude gets transformed because of prayer. Prayer is actually a very big part of a Muslim's personality, not just our behavior. In prayer, we think of it as a behavior. But prayer actually, the daily salawat, they're supposed to try, have a really direct effect on how we think. Our attitudes, our thought process, our mentality. Between dhuhr and asr, my thoughts are going to be impacted by the dhuhr prayer. <coughs> Between asr and maghrib, my thoughts, my priorities are going to be impacted by the asr prayer. It's the way a Muslim carries himself as a abd that's shaped. 
That's what the salawat do. You know how pillars hold a building together? The salawat hold our day together. They hold our day together. In between, the between hours are dictated by what quality of salat we have. Now if the salat itself becomes empty, if the salat becomes just cardiovascular exercise, this just becomes a review session for Surah Al-Ikhlas and Surah Al-Kawthar. Because you don't have time for anything more. You know? If it just becomes that, you're not going to see a change in your personality.